Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at a really cool trick you can do with the mirror tool. So I'm going to be clear, this is a relatively niche use of the mirror tool, in terms of you don't see it being done a lot, but I actually think it's got quite a lot of uses to it, as long as you're dealing with something that's got four components to the object. You'll see what I mean as I go through this. And bear in mind that most buildings will have four sides to them and things like that. I think this is fairly usable and it's really worth covering. So what I'm gonna do is start by talking about the problem or what way people would normally do this. And I'm gonna use an example of making a four part rose for sort of architecture. Now to do that, I'm gonna use construction lines. Now construction lines has now been updated for Blender 4. And what's really cool about this is Dan spent some time, that's the creator, making sure that this would be backwards compatible with other versions of Blender as well. So you're not gonna have any problems whatever version of Blender you're on. I really love it when creators are just that level of professional. So what I'm gonna do is up the segments to about 15 just to make this sort of arc shape. Let's go to somewhere about there. And then I'm gonna come back into normal mode. Alt and X, and just symmetrize that across with machine tools. You could obviously do this manually if you wanted to, and you could make this out of a circle if you wanted to and change it using the proportional editing tool, but it's quicker with construction lines. So if I just select this all and then press F to fill it, and we wanted to use this as the basis of, let's say, a Gothic window. Now, the normal way of doing this would be to select this, and we're gonna use some sort of radial array tool. I'm just gonna use hard ops for this, just because it's a bit quicker. You can do this the normal way. I'll put a link in the description of how you can do an array in native Blender. But with hard ops, it's just Q, mesh tools, radial array, but I want to do it around the center point, around the 3D cursor. So I'm gonna hold control, and then I'm just gonna scroll that down to four. So that's what I want. I want this sort of four-sided rows that you might get on some sort of window as like the top point. And this is the way people would often go about this. And you can just go into edit, so I can go to face mode and then I, and then I could let's say, delete that in a face. So we'll just do the face there and I can start adding in details and I get this cool shape, though I probably wanna get rid of the middle bit in the center. So this is our radial array and we've got it here and we can apply this if we need to. So I'm actually just gonna apply all and then just G and then X that off to the side. So we can do this with a radial array that's fine, we don't need this empty now, so let's just delete that. But we don't have to do it this way. This gets a bit slow. Now that I've applied this, we're gonna see we've got some problems. This doesn't actually work to bring all these points together. I'm gonna to have to, let's say, merge that at center there, and that's gonna probably need fiddling around, and then I'm gonna to have to do something with these, so let's merge those as center, and then that one as well. And then I don't actually want this going all the way in, so let's just join that, and then join that, and then start. It's just gonna be annoying, so I'm gonna start deleting those. And this is just gonna get a bit tedious to cut out this middle section. And the whole process has been a bit annoying. And at this point, I haven't actually done anything with this. So I'm gonna to have to add in all the detailing. And if I did that before I applied the radial array, this gives even more overlap. And if I do it after, then it just takes longer. This is annoying. So what I'm gonna do is remake this shape. And I'm gonna look at this in a different way. Now. The secret of this is we're gonna need an empty. So I'm gonna bring in an empty, just do a plain arrow so we can see that there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a mirror modifier. So come in here, mirror modifier, and we want that on the Y axis. Now if I start moving this around, it will move everything, or if I go into vertex mode and G and move it around, it's being centered around the origin of this object, which at the moment is in the center. What I can do is change this to now be mirrored across the empty. So now, if I move this empty, it's going to affect the mirror. But what's really important about this technique is that if I actually rotate this round, let's say 45 degrees, so I'm gonna type in 45, you can see that in the top corner there, and then hit enter. It now has mirrored it, but at an angle. And if I come back to this mirror, and then select that I want it to be on the X as well, it makes this quad formed shape, effectively doing the same as a four way radial array. Now, as I said, there's a limitation to this. This only works well when you're gonna be able to make something that's divisible by four, because you have to use this trick. It won't work on a triformed shape or something like that. So there are other things you can do to make this work, but this is the most convenient, at least for a quad formed shape. And as I said, Buildings are made up of four sides, so you could do this for a building. So why is this superior to this radial array? Well, so you can see here from the radial array that it just, well, cuts across each other. It's not very well made. The geometry is just a mess. 
And if I come into this, I will undo this in a second and click apply, you can see we've got the same problem here, except we sort of don't. If I come here and put on clipping, this will still have that problem if I apply it, because what I have to do for clipping is I have to get rid of some of the edges before I redo it. I'll show you what I mean. So again, if I apply all, we've got everything overlapping. If I undo that, so I've still got the modifier, go into vertex mode and I delete these out. So I'm gonna delete those vertices. If I select these and then E and extrude them out, I can drag them to the point where they connect. And now you don't get this overlap. In fact, it's probably best to do them one at a time. So let's just E to bring that down, but it will connect. And with the clipping turned on, it joins these together. So we don't have that problem of creating an overlap. In fact, it won't even let you create an overlap because it stops you as you get to the join. And I can just Alt and X and drag that to the other side using machine tools, or I could have done that manually. So this gets rid of the need to do that cleanup. And if I just bring that all together, I to bring that into the middle, let's go somewhere like there. Now let's go a bit more, I'll have to do a bit of cleanup. And then I can just select this. G and move that down to somewhere here. You can see again, it forms this clipping. We're getting a bit of an error here because of what's going on this side. So I'm just gonna move that over with symmetrize. I'm just gonna go into edge mode and I don't want that edge, that edge or that edge or those. So let's just delete those edges. And we've got our triformed shape. And if I want to, I can select those and shrink those in. If I want to make that thicker, and you'll notice, again, because of this clipping, everything's easier to do, although I do need to delete those vertices that I left. So this makes everything really quick and easy to edit. I only have to edit one section and the clipping is keeping this really nicely maintained. So for example, I can come to these faces. So let's A, let's go into face mode, and then E and extrude that up. And I'm adding to my quad form shaped. Now, something to be aware of, and I will cover this here because I think it's important. We've got the clipping and the merge turned on, but what we can't see, which is a little bit hidden if I get rid of this, is sometimes you actually get a face that's going to be here. In this instance, it hasn't created it, but that can happen and be an error. So just be aware of that. And then let's come and have a look at this. Let's control an R there. Let's put two edge loops on there and then face mode and select those faces. Let's extrude those up a little bit more. And then we can select our edges, select our edges there. Let's control and B and put in a chamfer. Let's select those and those and control and B and put in a bevel. You can see how quickly this affects all of the other four sections because they're mirrored. And importantly, when I apply this, so let's just do that now, everything becomes one nice shape with no overlap. And if I select this, press G, you can see this is one part. So it's just quite a little fun trick, possibly a bit niche, but if you're making anything with four sections to it, let's say a Gothic vault or arch system, it's a really nice trick to be able to use to save yourself a lot of workload in terms of what you want to create. As always, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do give the video a like to help share it around. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel further, there is a Patreon page where this file is going to be up there so you can have a look if you don't want to go to the time of making this yourself. Have a great day, guys.